Hello, my friends. Welcome to Trending. Today is Thursday, February 9th, and this is a kind of a strange afternoon edition. It's about 1.45 as we're recording today. So, Joe, this morning you preached at Friends University. Yeah, man. Their chapel service, our good friend Mike Jaderston is the assistant chaplain there, so we have you come. It was a fun time. Um, so it's good to be on a college campus. There's like something, you know, always buzzy about yes. college kids. Totally. You know, totally. like there's a happening crowd. Hip and homespuns, as Shakespeare would say. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> so we usually in the morning, we had, we're in the afternoon today. We didn't record last week. Several of you got in touch with us and they said, hey, we're trading this week. Sorry, we had to bail kind of last minute. We were, um, during the day, we were kind of helping move stuff around for construction. And then we actually sat down to record and the Wi-Fi went out. It did. And so we weren't able to use our little camera setup or couldn't upload anything. So we had to kind of last minute bail this last week. Today's been a crazy day, but we're here. We made it. That's right. We didn't want to do two in a row because then that's like rumors of being canceled. <laughs> <laughs> right. To get to merge, right? Yes. <laughs> All right. So. Okay, so there's a lot going on in the world. Of course, the State of the Union was last night. Um, there's a lot of things going on in the world. But you and I are both sports fans. We have to at least acknowledge that this is Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl week. It's a big week. There's a lot yes. going on in sports land. Maybe we'll get to some of the other things here. But right. I would say I'm a big Chiefs fan. I'm excited about that. Okay. What what's going through your mind as we get ready for the Super Bowl? So when the Super Bowl goes down, um, like this is like where uh, a spotlight is put on America. It's a big Ameri- American thing. When I went to Ukraine, uh, we had translators there. They live now in China. They watch the Super Bowl. Like so, yeah. this is a worldwide event, and uh, a lot of eyeballs on commercials, on the game, on the halftime show. And yeah. since I've been a Christian. Uh, Super Bowl week's been an interesting thing um, because there's like two two little focuses that happen. Okay. Yep. And maybe we could just like kick it around a little bit. Yeah. Focus number one is the halftime show. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, a lot of youth groups, as you know, they'll like host a chili cook off sure. in the morning, like, afternoon, right? This is a fundraiser for students, right? Yep. And then they host, a lot of youth groups will host like a ha- uh, uh, Super Bowl. Party. Watch party, yeah. Yeah, where all their friends and stuff come, and they put, like, a big screen up and all those things. But then there's, like, this dilemma for the for the youth workers of whether they should flip to something else for the halftime. Yeah. Because the halftime show could potentially be spicy. Yes. Um, music that doesn't explicitly honor God. Uh, maybe some displays of things which are quite uh, oh, worldly, maybe mm-hmm. a church person might say. And so there's this dilemma. Do we watch the halftime show? Do we not? Yeah. Um, and then since like Super Bowls tend to like create heroes because there's going to be some players that make demonstrative plays that help the outcome. They get famous for a minute. The church tries to seize on at least what I've seen. Yeah. These individuals, if they have a faith life, and these folks get like blown up to be these like faith icons. Mm-hmm. So the Super Bowl is not just a game; like it's larger than life for everybody. But these, I think, two ways in which the church kind of reacts and interacts with it. So yeah, um, I don't know. Maybe we should talk about um, how do we like what's our expectation? Should be our expectation for Christian athletes? Okay, in moments like these, mm-hmm. and maybe number two, like. Um, what should we do this halftime show as yeah. believers, if anything? Mm-hmm. So let's just do those one at a time. Let's do the halftime show first. So this year it's Rihanna. Yep. Going to have some special guests. It tends to be a theme because mm-hmm. there's like a headliner, but then they kind of sneak in some of these buddies along right. the way. So what are you expecting from Rihanna's halftime show? <laughs> and what would your advice be as like a Christian dad who will be watching and kids might wander into the room and, and things like that. So It is hard. And Rihanna, I'm not a huge Rihanna fan, but she's had some major hits. She's been like a kind of a staple at the top of the charts for a very long time. So I think a lot of people will recognize a lot of her music, even if they're not, you know, big fans of her. Um, she is the kind of person where I, it's kind of a wild, I have no idea what she's going to do. It, right. prob- it probably could. I could see it varying into some things that people might be uncomfortable with, or maybe not. I, I really don't know. Yeah. But I do think it's a good conversation, and I'm going to let you be the expert here because we don't, we don't need to get into it. But this week, the Grammys were also this week, and there right. there were some kind of he- some he- some headlines about um, Sam Smith and a couple other acts that were uh, questionable at best. Right. Some some uh, live performances that got a lot of criticism. So. You've been a parent longer than I have. Your kids are older than me, and right. you're a pastor. So let me hear from you. What, right. When those things do, when they're kind of big pop culture moments, 
How, how do you handle that? Yeah, I think it's it's left to each family. I mean, it, your kids. I, this is what I found out about, about my kids. They are discovering things earlier than I plan or expect or even know. Yeah. Uh, stuff is kind of wandering into their view uh, or onto their screen and stuff like that. So we could try our best to, you know, block. Uh, our kids from stuff, but stuff's working its way through. And so um, I, well, one of the things that we've tried to do is just, we've tried to create an open environment with our kids where they could talk to us about anything. Yeah. Um, we also give them a right to their privacy, uh, of course, within reason um, yeah. as they continue to grow up. So our kids have watched halftime shows probably as, as early as we can have imagined. Um, but I think we've had friends who didn't allow their kids to watch it and ours did. Mm-hmm. And so, I think Ginger and I's approach is we just talk them through it. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff honestly flies over their head. Yeah. Uh, but the things that they want to talk about are the things that they're really grappling with. And so I guess what I would say, because like I, I remember I was, I heard that uh, it was like, what was it, Beyonce's uh, halftime show a few years ago. Like there was all these supposed like Illuminati, you know, references and stuff. Yeah. Which um, when I watched the overview and the exposition of all that, I thought, Man, you have to be really attentive to catch these things, you know. I'm like, I feel like they're kind of making something out of nothing there, uh, much to do about nothing. But um, I guess I would just say this: like, when you take in a, a piece of art or performance, mm-hmm. the first question that I ask is, like, what story is this trying to tell? Mm-hmm. Uh, what can we affirm, and then what can we deny? So, part of Christian discipleship, engaging a culture, is what can we reclaim from a fallen world as yeah. God's uniquely God's, and then what can we, we renounce? as something that's expiring and is no longer going to be included and necessary in God's new creation. And that really just comes with a story. And so, yes, the music is probably good. There's a ton of commotion, all these things going on. There will be weird stuff because weird stuff is memorable. Mm. But ultimately, I look at, like, what's the story being told? And maybe the most vivid example of this was when Coldplay headlined, Mm -hmm. but, like, Bruno Mars and Beyonce came in support. There was, like, a vivid storyline within that. It started, Mm -hmm. like, with this kind of paradise and then conflict and chaos and then reconciliation, repair, and then back to paradise. Like, you could see those moves happen. Now, some artists won't choose to do something like that. Then you can just say, okay, hey... We, we took it in. We can now forget it. But, like, there might, but if there's like a story unfolding, I think the question I ask is like, what's, what's trying to be proclaimed here? And then what can I embrace? And then what should I deny? And I think that's actually a, a, very, a very fruitful conversation with kids. Yeah. So That's good. I like yeah. that. That's a good way to frame it. Yeah. I, I, get, I have no idea what to expect. I'll we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Okay. There'll be some, I bet there'll be some really buzzy moment during the halftime show, but I have no idea what it is. Yeah. Do you, remember, do you remember Left Shark? I was just going to say that, yes. <laughs> like the, I, I was listening to a, a culture podcast on halftime shows, and they were talking about Left Shark. <laughs> yes. From, From Katy Perry. Yes. The one shark that maybe didn't dance as enthusiastically as all the other sharks. That's, That's right. great. So I hope it's something like that. I hope, yes. I hope next week we're talking about something like that. And not something on the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, so, yeah. We'll see, and there's going to be the, cr- the the cranky preacher. I mean, everybody's got their roles in a moment like this. You'll you'll get the crankier preachers that bemoan the erosion of our culture because of what they see at the halftime show. Uh, okay, that's their right. They can say whatever they want, uh, and their communities can have any sort of perspective. I, I just I tend to avoid that. I, I, yeah. I at least want to give an attempt to saying. Okay, what is going on here? Like, what story is trying to be told, and where can we go from there? This is exactly what Paul does when he goes to places like Lystra in the Book of Acts, uh, when he goes to Mars Hill in Athens in Acts 17. Like, he he's making a proclamation of Jesus from poets and songwriters from the Greco-Roman world. Like, he's not mentioning Moses, he's not mentioning right. Isaiah mm-hmm. uh, or Haggai or any of those guys. Like, he's actually aware of the other voices in culture, and he is riffing off what's already in the water of culture. Yep. Some parts of the church won't go there, and that's fine, but we can't say it's non-Christian to do it because it happens more than we think. Yep. And Pastor Brent just uh, preached on Psalm 19, mm-hmm. uh, and he talked about the first uh, half of Psalm 19, the hymn of creation. Yep. There's actually some decent scholarship that that may have been a song from another Mesopotamian community besides Israel, hmm. and the songwriter, the psalmist, took it as a familiar yep. tune, but then added verses seven and following about the necessity of the law of God. How there's like general revelation and special revelation. Yeah. But it didn't go without this common song that other communities are saying. And so um, I think sometimes the line between sacred secular is not as clear cut as we might think. Yeah. And if we actually get into the weeds of the Bible, 
we would be stunned to see how often biblical uh, authors and their audiences are aware of what's going on in the world around them and using it to bear witness to the unique God they serve. Yeah. So, and that's that's pretty much why we do this whole training thing, right? We try, yeah. We want to take a, yeah. take a look at what's going on around us and see what kind of what you were saying, what truths can we grab onto, or what things do we need to denounce. I think that's kind of what we try to do every week. Right. What's going on around us, and how can we see God at work in pop culture and the news around us? So, yes, absolutely. We're, our time's going to go fast here. I know you, we were also we just briefly mentioned whenever there's a Super Bowl or any ma- major sporting event, there's going to be a hero, right? Yes, there's going to yeah. be a hero of the game. Most likely that hero is going to, right after the game, they're going to dump the, the Gatorade. Whoever the, Lisa Salters or whoever the sideline reporter is going to stick a mic in their face and they're going to say, what would you think? Yes. And most of them say, I, I, I want to thank God. That's right. the first thing out of most of their mouths. Yeah. And I, you, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Like yeah. how, do we, how do we handle, how do we, how do we elevate these heroes? Should we elevate these heroes? What if they claim some kind of Christian faith? What if that faith doesn't always come into play with how they actually live their life? Right. That's another kind of complicated thing that comes up in big cultural moments like this. Yeah. So what, yeah. what's on your mind with that? On the one hand, it's encouraging, right? Because this is a big moment for them. Like their whole lives, they've been wanting this to happen. Yeah. And if the first thing they think about is God, and that comes from a sincere place, like how cool is that? Yeah. And that resonates with a lot of people of faith. Um, I think it's also uh, encouraging that they would see their work, mm-hmm. which is a sport, but it's still work, is an integral part of their faith. And yeah. for, I mean, many preachers are saying, hey, don't have a Sunday faith, have a Monday through Saturday faith as well. Right. And so these guys are living it out in that their own unique way. Um, sometimes I do worry that um, some, they invoke the name of God uh, to be liked by people, like whether yeah. they are true to or not. But I think also, like, as I have more of an issue of what the church tries to do with these people. Mm. Uh, well, I'm also saying, like, don't you just love sports hero so-and-so well they've got a christian faith and if you don't got one like mm-hmm. you should because they do and yeah. you should too almost kind of like using them in their faith claim mm-hmm. um, as a way to like prop up our unique uh, faith it's, i don't know I, it always seems a little bit awkward and strange and i think too it just like it points to this thing where i think sometimes these folks whether if they um if it's like a sports hero another famous person um they want to give an unbeliever this sense where they are the odd one out because they don't believe in what I believe, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's almost like taking the position of dominance instead of a Mm -hmm. humble position of engaging Mm -hmm. with them on faith claims, having honest religious discussion, like knowing from their experience why they're coming up short of wanting to believe. Um, I think also like this, one of the things that I I sense the current church is struggling with, not just our church, but church is, is I don't know if people want Jesus to be on the free market as one of many options. I still think Mm -hmm. that they want Jesus to be the only option for faith in America. Because what if he's just one of many? Well, people pick him if he's one out of a dozen, you Mm -hmm. know? And the way that they try to claim that there's not a dozen options out there is to say, look here, look here, look here, look here. Like, here's all these Christians. There really is no other option. It's uh, this or it's not. And so I just want to say, hey, like, do we have enough confidence in the work of Jesus enough that even if we're not, if if we truly are in a post-Christian world, there's now equally many options, and Christian is just one of them, Mm -hmm. that Jesus can still thrive. Yeah. And still change and transform lives today yeah. on the open market. And not just because he's a given, yeah. like he, like Christianity has been in the Western world for quite some time. Mm-hmm. Because one of the many options is it still applicable today. Yeah, I think that's the I think that's the anxiety that people aren't articulating, but this is the way that we act out from that anxiety. Yeah. And just to clarify what you said, you said Jesus is just one of many options. What you mean is... Culture is looking to a lot of different things yes. for salvation, but there's really only one. Yes. I, don't make, I don't want people to take your no, quote out of context here. No, 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 yeah, that's right. So, you, can go, you can go to Acts 4.12. I mean, yeah, as yeah. Christians, we believe that Jesus is the only name under heaven given to people by which they must be saved. I'm just saying Western culture may have been a Christianized culture. Right. The church may have been the, the most dominant option. I think we can all agree. Like Now Christianity is one of many yeah. out there. And if it is a free market of ideas, yeah. I think the anxiety is... Mm-hmm. Will Jesus be embraced when there are several options? Yeah, right. Like, will he be picked at yep. all of them? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that some people in the church are pretty anxious about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if we really believe it, then we need to believe that it'll hold up to scrutiny, right? Right, like it, right. It's strong enough to hold up against yeah. those other options. With or without Patrick Mahomes making some sort of faith claim, right? <laughs> right like, right. I mean, it's great uh, that Mahomes does if he if he genuinely does. Mm-hmm. 
That's not necessary for Jesus to do his work. I mean, Jesus is raised from the dead. Um, he's on the loose. He can work inside and outside of football players' lives for the sake of including more people into the story. And so I think we have to believe that. Yeah. And so um, I just think we'll see some interesting things happen on the back end of heroes being dubbed yeah. after the Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. You said Mahomes, so let's just let's just assume it's going to be Mahomes and not Jalen Hurts, who's going to be interviewed at the end of the game, right? <laughs> Can we just go ahead and... Who are you picking? We haven't got, we haven't gone there yet. I mean, I so would it, would it be nice for the Chiefs win? Yes, I mean the, the local team. It'd be great. And aren't they enjoyable? Like when they did that ring around the rosy, like they're huddle. adorable. Come on, they're, they're adorable. America's team. They're also like because they've been there often enough now. They're kind of like trending towards villains a little bit, like the yeah. same old guys. Almost like they're turning into. Dare we say the New England Patriots? Don't you old. dare! Don't you dare call my Chiefs the Patriots. <laughs> so I, if 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 it's, if it's only the championship games that we're looking at, I mean Philly dominated. They look tough. So I'm picking Philly just by a small margin. You would, and I could be I could be wrong. Hey, spoken like a Packers fan. No, like a Packers fan. <laughs> All right, whatever. All right. Do you want to make a wager on this? Thing? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> big big Chiefs fan. <laughs> I think it'll be a close game. I think it'll be a good game. I think game. it could be good. Yeah. 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 I think it'll be entertaining. It'll be good. Yeah. Okay. Any closing thoughts on the Super Bowl Sunday? Uh, nothing Super Bowl on Super weekend? Bowl Sunday. I think it's going to be great. Hopefully, you got food and people that you get to enjoy it with, even if it's just the commercials, even if it's a halftime show, whatever. Like, just yeah. hang out with people, be connected. I think I'm going to make a bold prediction. Okay. I think no less than five years from now, the Monday after the Super Bowl, national holiday. It seems like that should be a national holiday and the day after Halloween. Yeah. Let's just all get on the same page. Everyone's grumpy and tired the next morning. Yeah. November 1st and the day after the Super Bowl should be a holiday. That's right. I think banks, mail run, all that, no schools, I think it's going to happen. That'd be great. Five years. Heard it here first. A bold prediction yes. for 2027. Yeah, here we <laughs> go. That sounds like a good year. See that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Sure, why not? <laughs> Okay, well, there's a lot going on around here at Rich Point. If you join us on Sunday, you'll notice the construction stuff, that the wall moved in the lobby. There's a lot going on around here. So love to have you on Sunday. This is our last week of the Psalm series before we kind of shift gears and do things different for a few weeks. So as always, we'd love to have you join us on Sunday. Do you want to give a little teaser for next week? Yeah. We need to wrap up. Let's, let's do, yeah, yeah. So next week, so there's like, Matt, you predicted it. Like this was going to be the year of AI. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that was like in the, like it was murmuring, but like this chat GPT yep. stuff and um, this other outfits out there, people are beginning to leverage uh, AI a whole lot more. And you were posing the question like, what will the church do? At yeah. the dawning of the um, era of AI. Yeah. Um, and so, like, how we get knowledge, how we mitigate truth, all those things uh, coming from a machine and not from a human being. Yep. And so, uh, you've been doing some experiment with ChatGPT, uh, you and Andy both, and it's been hilarious. We, you know, you ask the machine interesting questions and we get some interesting responses. So, next week, we do want to take some time just to give some perspective on where we see it's going, um, maybe some opportunities, uh, maybe some yeah. boundaries we need to set yep. uh, in the dawning of AI. So it's a big topic. It is a big We're not going to get to the exhaustive depth of it. But I think it's something to kick around for sure. I think so too. So that'll be next trending next week. Okay. Yeah. Barring any construction catastrophes. And Wi-Fi going down. And Wi-Fi going down. Yeah, we'll do man. that next week. Come so. on. We don't have time for that. <laughs> nobody. Nobody. <laughs> All right. Well, join us Sunday. We'll be back here next week. And go Chiefs. Go teams. <laughs> <laughs> have a good weekend, everybody.